All right, let's take a look at the MGC Pyraminx. First of all, I want to thank YJ for sending me this puzzle to test. This is a prototype, so there are going to be some minor differences in the final version. I'll do my best to point them out throughout the video, but there's a chance I'll miss something. I don't have pricing information yet, but I expect this to compete directly with the Waylong, so probably somewhere between $12 and $18. It's a little bit larger than other puzzles, but that's mostly because of the pointier tips. Because all of the extra size is at the edges, I've never noticed it during a solve, and I don't expect it to be an issue. It has adjustable magnets with six settings, but the only way to adjust tension and compression is with a screw. This might not sound ideal, but it's actually a good thing, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Finally, it comes with frosted plastic, which I will complain a lot more about later. With specs out of the way, let's talk about a few things I really like about this puzzle. The first is the adjustable magnet system. It works very similarly to the Waylong with the circle thing that you adjust with a screwdriver, but I think it's executed a little bit better. The clicks are much more defined and they are labeled more clearly, so it's just a little bit easier to use and you get an extra setting. The magnets are a little bit weak on this prototype, but YJ told me that they will be strengthening them in the final version, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. My favorite thing about this puzzle is definitely the tips. They're not quite as good as the Little Magic, but they are very close, and here's why. As you can see, the lack of a compression adjustment setting makes the part that extends down into the center much smaller. It's just barely bigger than the screw. Here's a Waylong which has adjustable compression, and you can see that the part that extends down is much larger, which makes the friction point a lot bigger and the tips a lot slower. A concern I had out of the box is that the tips fell apart pretty easily when it hit the table, and that's because this mechanism to hold them in place isn't very strong. However, this is another thing that YJ said they will be fixing. The last change I know about is that they are weakening the tip magnets, which I don't think is a good thing. I already get more plus twos on this than on other puzzles because the tips turn a little too easily in my opinion, but fortunately they left plenty of space in the tips to stack magnets and make them stronger. The next thing I like about this puzzle is the feel. I understand that it's subjective, but it's very smooth and tactile. I also appreciate that you can hear the magnets when you turn it, which I think adds to the tactility. I know it's not quite the same as feeling it for yourself, but here's just a sound test so you can sort of get an idea. The forward corner cutting is also pretty good on this puzzle. YJ advertises that it has 120 degree corner cutting, but that is a bit misleading. You can see that it'll go from almost any angle like this. But if you test Pyraminx corner cutting, you should make sure you're holding it in the same grip that you would do solves. So if I'm supporting this edge, it makes the force on the puzzle much more direct and it can corner cut a lot farther here than if you're actually doing a solve. So this is about how I would normally grip it and it can still go, it's still better than others, but it's not revolutionary like YJ seems to think. The final thing I really like about this puzzle, I really wish I didn't have to talk about, but it has a blue core, which is a very good thing because it's not going to break. You probably know that Waylongs come with transparent cores installed, and I have to swap them out so they don't break. And this doesn't seem to have that problem, so I guess good job, YJ. All of that sounds great, but unfortunately I have some major issues with this puzzle as well. I suggested that YJ change all of them, but they ignored everything, which was pretty annoying. The first and definitely biggest problem is the frosted plastic. You can see mine's kind of glossy, but that's only because I've done hundreds of solves on it and tried to polish it using paper and a stack mat, which kind of works, but not very well. I don't mind frosted plastic too much on 3x3s, but on a Pyraminx it's much worse because the angle that you're holding it is smaller, so it's slippery by nature. I'll insert a clip here just showing how much harder it was to hold onto out of the box than the Waylong, which comes with glossy plastic. The plastic is my biggest issue with this puzzle because it makes it so much worse and it would be so easy to fix, but there are some other issues as well. The first is reverse corner cutting. Having smaller fluorine holes does help forward cutting because it adds to the direct force of this piece going up to this one, but unfortunately it comes at the expense of reverse. It's really difficult for this puzzle to cut past where the centers overlap, so even here it gets stuck compared to the Waylong which can go about halfway. 
Unfortunately, the best way to fix this is probably going to be a Florian mod, which I expected to be a thing of the past. I'm not sure if I'll end up doing it, but I think it could help. And my final grievance with this puzzle is the lack of friction grooves. The pieces are completely smooth, which means using pretty much any heavy lube slows it down to the point that it's unusable. I really like the angstrom setup on the Waylong, and it can handle it because of these grooves. But the lube just kind of gets stuck here and doesn't move around and it slows down the puzzle. I know lubing things with Gravitas slows them down initially, but I did 50 or 100 break-in solves with Gravitas and it never sped back up, so I had to clean it out. Now onto the ugly. I really just added the section for the cliche, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, but uh, the pieces look kind of weird, I guess. This is a good puzzle, and it's nice to see another Waylong competitor, but I really don't think it's for me. I've kind of gotten past the frosted plastic because I found a way to mostly get rid of it, but it's definitely annoying out of the box. The biggest problem for me right now is the lack of reverse corner cutting. Some of my algs rely a decent amount on reverse corner cutting, especially foreflip. So I didn't even do that right. But I get a lot of lockups doing certain L4Es because of that. And that's the main reason that I don't think I'll switch unless I get my hands on a modded version. YJ made a nice puzzle here, but it's really disappointing to see that they missed out on something great because of a few easy to fix pitfalls. However, it will be available soon and I'm looking forward to hearing what everyone else thinks of it. Before I go, here are some mediocre solves that show off both the benefits and flaws of the puzzle. Thanks for watching.